Welcome to another episode of Cheers to Controversy, where today we'll be discussing women's sports, starting with Naomi Osaka and her struggle with the media when it comes to the Grand Slam tournaments. We'll also be taking a look at Governor DeSantis in Florida and the passing of the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, as well as talking a little bit about the Olympics that are coming up. Guys, you excited for the Olympics that are coming up? No. I honestly, I used to look forward to it. I, I'm, I'm just not. I don't know if it's the rest of the distractions that are going on or, or what. But um, I, I'm not excited like I usually am. I gotta admit, I'm ready for some water polo. I feel like the only time I get it is the Olympics. It is. Yeah, man, it's good times. September, There's lots of water polo. Yeah, because why? What are you talking about? Oh, I'll be playing lots of water polo in Mexico. Oh, he's going to mess with ah. we're talking about here. Yeah. What are you talking about? That's water Marco's polo. Marco's not playing in that one. No, 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 dude. Full violent water polo. We had bloody noses before. You tread water the whole 40 minutes? No, nah, we walk. Yeah, it's what I'm talking about. It's a little <laughs> different. <laughs> nah, dude. It's fucking like guys. It's all an optical no. illusion. Exactly. I will say. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, I went, when we went to Mexico, not this last time, the time before, played water 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 polo every day like i was literally like the activities director like what time's water polo i can't wait to go down and play more water polo like when's it gonna be and uh they were like oh 11 o'clock in the morning come on man you know and i'm like yeah i'll be there i'll be there right and they like i'm in the one day i was late they waited to start till i got there because i was like there every day so it was like me my dad uh dave rashid couple other people we were just like all playing water polo and we were you know aggressive my sister was playing and you know all relatively decent athletes um and like every single day dude i came back and dave and i which dave is a little on the heavy side now and and i came back i was like dude we're joining a water polo league like this is awesome <laughs> dude i went to hawaii i was like how deep is that fucking water <laughs> i'm like what do you mean you're treading water how are you supposed to throw <laughs> i was like yeah all right I'm, I was, uh, that was my last trip to the y in two years so you went and just puddled around in the uh shallow end and you like, literally okay, walk, I'm good. I'm out. i walked in with a bathing suit and i turned around and i walked out after i was like, <laughs> fuck. I was like nah, i'm good uh, man. oh that's great Did you have the trunks yeah <laughs> <laughs> the board shorts on. board shorts with a beer bottle with a with a beer bottle opener in them i'm like where's the bar <laughs> there's a swim up bar here I love it. Yeah, not quite water polo, but definitely fun. Me the Mexican resorts, fantastic water polo or their version of. But no, seriously, when it comes to the Olympics, I love watching the water polo. I, I think it's great. I think it's just a different style of sport. And, you know, it's just fun to watch. I always like the Winter Olympics more anyway, to be honest with you. I'm, maybe I'd be a little bit more excited for that coming around skiing snowboarding stuff like that and of course everybody loves curling so there's that because we all know we could be excellent curlers if we trained for it no matter hell yeah, yeah. anybody who curling. plays quates or horseshoes uh, or... It, curling's kind of like water polo official water polo not this stuff they do up here at the ymca in the united states wait how is curling like water polo well, i just told you you know, you know not this fake stuff where they tread water oh you mean yeah. like Shuffleboard. I mean real. No, I mean real water polo. <laughs> Look, we have a curling gym here in Charlotte. You it's do? not that easy. Yeah, we do. It's an official. Crazy. Yeah, when you guys come down, next time you guys come down, that's crazy. Oh, There's a curling we'll gym in Charlotte and two hockey teams in Florida. What is this world coming to? I don't know. I don't one know. Of them happens to be my favorite hockey team, but yeah. I heard that one of these hockey teams frowns upon what you wear if you're in the first uh, no three rows. No comment. No comment. No comment. Spoken like a true Lightning fan. Thrown out a little kid. It's disgraceful. First Did of they all, end up throwing I, him out or did they let him stay? I didn't get the back half of that story. I don't, I I don't know, but clip. I'll tell you a story. I went to uh, I, I went to a Flyers Lightning game, and I wish they would have barred me entrance into there wearing a Lightning jersey. So I actually, I actually brought one with me. I was meeting Uncle John, 
uh, he'd gotten tickets for me for like my birthday or something like that. Might have been, I, I don't know what it was, but it was something, it was some sort of playoff game. Maybe he just got them. Maybe it was a early birthday present or something like that. And we went, uh, we went to, uh, I guess it was the new, whatever it was, the FU center at that point. I don't know what it was. Yeah. We drove separate because he was coming from Jersey. I was coming from PA and I brought my lightning Jersey, but I had another shirt on and my, my uncle John said, just bring it with you. Just bring it with you. And he's on the phone. He's like, all right, yeah, great. I'll bring it with me. We get in there. I don't remember. I didn't have it on. And the guy, the security guard's like, no, oh, just put the Jersey on. Just put the Jersey on, you know, blah, blah, blah. Look, dude, we're in there. And we're not even sitting it next to each other. I'm sitting and he's sitting a row in front of me because it was, you know, playoff tickets. It was hard to get. And I'm in my lightning jersey surrounded by all Flyers fans. Dude, I'm getting cursed at. I got spit on by like seven-year-old kids. I'm like 22. I work in a prison at this point. I'm a corrections officer and I'm getting <laughs> spit on by a seven-year-old kid. I had beer dumped on me. They put us up on the they put us up on the up on the uh, on the teleprompter. They were singling us out and they were screaming. Now, luckily, the people around me, they're like, who the fuck's Bradley? I'm like, Brian Bradley. He was like a center for the lightning. Like when they first came into the league, they're like, oh, the jersey's that old. It's like, oh, you're OK. I was like, yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, and I got I got followed to my car. Luckily, a police officer was there and basically walked up as I was approaching my car because I didn't know what the hell to do. And these two guys were following me like, and saying they're going to kick my ass. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And the police officers didn't broke it up. So the long version of the story or the short version of the story is maybe it was for safety reasons. I don't know. They ejected a guy. They ejected a lightning fan who was getting beer dumped on him from the section behind him. He did not. He shouldn't have been standing there. He was in a seat. They were dumping beer on him and throwing food at him. What were they going to do? Throw out a whole section. They threw out the lightning fan. <clears throat> Makes sense they re- to me. They relocated the Lightning fan. <laughs> I don't know. All I heard was, ah, yeah, goodbye. I mean, they, they do that at a lot of stadiums. They relocate them. Everybody cheers, right? Like something's happening. Meanwhile, they're getting bumped up to a suite. They're getting free clothes. They're taking care of them. They're getting apologized to. Uh, who won the game? The Lightning did. Hey, well, there you go. That helped. I'm whispering it. I don't know why I'm whispering it. Like, you guys are going to kick my ass. So, I look, I was at a Yankees-Red Sox one time, game one time, and there was a woman there. She must have been in the third row. This is the bleachers, actually the bleacher creature section. And she's wearing a Red Sox jersey. People were actually being pretty cool about it. Actually, I think it was a Red Sox t-shirt. People were being fine about it. But they scored first, and then she starts talking shit. And as soon as that happened... Oh, you can't do that. Everything changed. Uh yeah, I, sure. I did little like. Yeah, we, you you can't if you're if you're in the opposing stadium arena, whatever your ballpark, whatever you want to call it, and you're on the other side and your team's doing good, you just embrace the fact that the baseball gods or whatever are smiling down on you and you are winning while you're in the visitors' ballpark. You don't start boasting shit or you are going to get cracked in the head with a bush pounder that's full and unopened, and then you're just going to be leaving with a concussion. This bush latte or bush regular. This was not. <laughs> this was not her, her choice. That's not the route that she went. She decided to cheer. Let's go Red Sox. And that you know, let's go Red Sox, right? In that kind of a you know baseball style chant, like "fuck you" chant. Yeah, essentially. So she's doing that, and you know, people start yelling back at her, and then she starts yelling back stuff, and you know, she wasn't. She was by no means like. A big girl, but she had a little weight on her. They don't she, cry. she leaves. Don't you body shame, you piece of shit. They did. Christ, oh, they did. Bro. When this was not 2021 when it happened. No, I'm she, <laughs> I'm just telling a story here, boys. So she comes back and they start chanting, eat a salad to Ooh. that same tone. Eat a salad. And they go, and they didn't stop. <clears throat> Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. She left. She left. Like she was so embarrassed. Her face was getting so red. I actually felt really bad for her because, like, you made your point. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> but nope. She left. I'm sure she went somewhere else. But yeah, you just don't want to poke the bear when there's fifty thousand people that don't like what you're doing. We were. Uh, it's the most aggressive section of the stadium, too. Yeah. So you know, you know. Eric, my dad is a Redskins fan, right? Mm-hmm. And we've taken him. I've taken him to a couple of Eagles games. And one guy that I used to work with, he's got second row seats in the end zone. And uh, 
usually try and take my dad to the Redskins Eagles game. We're going and we meet up with Messer and all those guys. They all happen to be at the same game. So we're like all meeting them with tailgating. And then these guys are like, this guy comes up and he like, I don't know, there's like three guys that came up and they just saw my dad in the Redskins jersey. Um, they're like making fun of him. They're like, right, like fuck this post. Like, I think they thought that we were picking on him. We're like, now nah, we're we're with the big guy. Like <laughs> they're like, whatever. So then we're walking into the game and they're all going, Virgin, Virgin, Virgin. And then he's like, uh, it's my son. I'm like, not biological. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Great because yeah, it's to, true. But... Way to protect the pride. Too funny. All right. So speaking of sports, we said we were going to talk about Naomi Osaka. She comes out. She says that she doesn't want to talk to the media. That it makes her anxious, and you know, from a mental illness standpoint, or it, it makes her feel very uncomfortable, very anxious, and it doesn't allow her to perform at her best. So she tells the she and it makes this announcement before the tournament starts. Skips her first media session after she wins. She's currently ranked second in the world. In the world, yeah, right. Um, she does have a victory. She does have a Grand Slam victory over Serena Williams, which if she never wins again, that's just something that she'll always be able to say it happened because Serena Williams right. is one of, if not the greatest female tennis player of all time. So she she's done a lot in her career and she's still very, very young, right? Uh, she, I think she's 22 years old right now. That's a guess, but I think that she's right there. And they came out after her first victory. She skipped the session. They said they were going to find her $15,000 as part of the requirements for her to participate in the tournament. So she proceeded to withdraw from the tournament. And now she's trying to create conversation around this to see whether or not uh, it's fair for her to be participating in the media sessions. And I think it's an interesting topic. I don't think it's something that's going away. I think it's a controversial topic because there are really – good points to be made on both sides. So I was curious to see where you boys might stand on this. Frankie, we'll start with you. Yeah. So I, I do see both sides as well, right? It's, it's the media or the, the networks are the ones that are providing this sporting event to us, right? And that costs a lot of money. They have these TV contracts, they want that extra exposure and those extra interviews in the same breath as a player, especially with this not being a team sport not signing a contract with the Eagles and the Eagles are saying you need to go do X, Y, and Z. I, I feel like there's got to be some, some control being the athlete. I'm talking prime time athlete, number two in the world saying, fuck you. Would you rather me be gone? And that's, that's what's kind of happening here. And I know that some of the argument Gio is going to probably bring this up in regards to the money that they're getting from the tournament which again, I understand the, the the payouts are coming from a lot of this stuff, but in the same breath, you can't remotely play off that a majority of that money is not going back to bigger pockets, more so than the athlete that's cashing in that purse. So I think there should be some personal agreement. Maybe it's a bump in pay. Maybe they get paid per those, the, those interviews and that would kind of solve it. They either want to do it or they don't. I know that it's a control scenario, but I think there should be a little bit of personal choice in that. I do. I mean, that's an interesting aspect. I never really thought of it that way. So you're saying to incentivize people to participate with the media that they're compensated. Yes. Per interview. Because she's getting paid to win, or I'm sorry, the purse that she gets for taking first or second, whatever, mm -hmm. is because she accomplished that as a tennis player. Not did I give a good interview, right? So if you want me to give an interview, pay me for the interview. If you want me to win a tournament and you're going to give me $10 million to do so, then that's what that $10 million is for. Yeah, but Okay, so now I'm going to jump in because I wholeheartedly disagree with that. So here's the thing, right? You want to enter my tournament? Here are the rules, Frank. You and Mike want to enter my tournament. You guys don't have to because there's a shitload of other people that will come play tennis in my tournament. But part of the rules are this, right? You're all earning a chance to win $10 million, Okay. You're all going to take 15 minutes and do a brief media blitz if they want to talk to you. You're all going to wear X amount of attire. You're allowed two sponsors per your clothing. You are allowed, you know, one 15-minute break between each set. You're allowed, you know, whatever those rules might be. Those are the rules for the tournament to go in. And you enter it in. You sign it. You do it. Because here's the thing, right? Yeah, people are making money. Of course they are. The people that run the thing aren't doing it. To not make any money. Of it's course. Like, it goes, this, nor goes back to the same, this goes back to the same argument 
with like a corporation. Why are CEOs making so much money? Because they're running the fucking business that hired you. Right. Right. What, so, what so, I'm so if you if you agree to go into my tournament and part of those rules are that you're gonna spend 15 minutes talking to the media, you're gonna spend 15 minutes talking to the media, or you're just not gonna enter my tournament. Bottom line, which is what she did. She withdrew. She said, fuck it. 15 Good. minutes See in front it. of the cameras isn't worth taking this tournament down. So now they lost the number two talent in the world because they needed a 15 minute spot that's really not going to do like much for their tournament too. She's not going to be number two for much longer because it's time for a new number two. Right. And, and maybe that's the direction she goes in. Uh, and that's fine. Way, I'm, I just by, think that by, you know, by, kind by, of like, I heard like some philosopher say, Two is not a winner, and three nobody remembers. But seriously, Ooh, what does it take to be number one? Ne Nelly, great Nelly reference. <laughs> Way to work Nelly into the show. Yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, I got kind of a little bit more with Gio on this one. One is that they, Osaka, Naomi Osaka, any tennis player, is not under contract to have to participate in any tournament. It is part of the rules that they put out there saying that this is a requirement for the tournament. If she's saying that there is a little bit of stress that accompanies and it's part of that, that means every single athlete that's giving these interviews, then they're, they're being subjected to that stress. That said, mental health is obviously extremely important. Over the last 30 to 40 years, we've come a long way to understanding it a little bit better. There's still a lot more to learn and understand. If it's something that's really, really this devastating to her, she should withdraw. She should get the help that she needs because it is going to be a requirement for her regardless of however it works out. She's going to need to be giving interviews at some point. And if she doesn't, you'll see a lot of athletes complain saying that then they are no, they don't want to. And Frankie, I get what you're saying. You can, you can ask them to pay it, but who's going to end up giving these interviews? Because... There's only a handful of people that people want to see in these interviews. I don't think world rank number 98 people even know who that is. Right. Uh, they're not going to watch that interview, but who they're going to watch are the people they have the highest expectations of. And she happens to be one of those people. One, because of her level of success. Two, for her level of success at her age. And three, because she is newer uh, to the scene of success with Serena having dominated for so long. I, my my feeling on this is that they are going to lose the the mental health crisis that's going on and the awareness and everybody's got it tagged on a Facebook profile picture and hashtagged. I think the masses are going to basically pull a cancel culture style to this and absolutely railroad uh, the the Grand Slam. Here's why I think that won't happen because yeah, this is a global, this is a global sport. This is not just the United States sport. While I understand the United that's States fair. is a big market for it, this is a global sport. That's yeah. that's fair. I didn't, I but, didn't. And people want to watch tennis because they want to watch the tennis, right? If she gets eliminated naturally in this in the second round, people are still watching the third round. Yeah, and nobody canceled the NBA. Nobody canceled the NFL. Maybe ratings are down or ratings suffer a little bit, but that didn't get canceled. And by the way. If she's okay to compete in tens of thousands in front of tens of thousands of people, she can talk to a couple in front of a camera. Yeah, she said. I think she said it just made her nervous, like for the questions that were surrounding. Her sister came out and made a statement, and she could say no down. comment. People do it all the time. She could. I think there is a responsibility that you have to comment. It's part of it, and again, it's part of the rules of entering the tournament. Yeah, she's not say, under you know, contract that's a great, to enter that's a great, the tournament. That's a great question. Um, honestly, I don't have an answer. You know uh, the the ball just wasn't with me or I was just feeling really good on the, on the stroke today. Uh, you know, I appreciate your next question. You know, whatever it, it is, it, look, golfers, golfers have to do it. We just, who was it? Brooks Kepka or whatever. They just like, clearly he was frustrated at that golf event. He probably on, uh, uh, under obligation to speak to the media after the event. Cause he's one of the top golfers and he lost a little bit. Remember like the guy walked by and he's like, he so like, I, they, 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 they got it. They got to do it. Is this nothing new? And, and, at the end of the day, like you say, oh, is this going to create a problem feature? More people are going to drop out. Then they'll just start being less and less money because those different organizations that want that media piece there are just going to put lower, less money in. 
the the way the to your point, Gio. I mean, the way the rankings work are the more tournaments you win, or the higher you place in these tournaments, you yeah. get points, and then you get the ranking. So you would essentially right. same just as fall golf. If you didn't participate, right? Right. Yep. Same as golf. You, you got to get par, everything. Yeah. Yeah. You need points. Yeah. So we're we're stuck in a rock and a hard place here. Ultimately, we want to see the best athletes compete, uh, but at the same time, we want it to be a level playing field. We want to respect people from a mental health standpoint. I think my take is going to be. I feel that she should step away, get the help that she needs, get to the point where she's comfortable doing these things, come back and just start dominating the tour. Right. Relax in her $7 million house that she purchased that was owned by Nick Jonas. She'll be fine. <laughs> is, that, is that true? Does that yeah. really happen? Yeah. Really? She's with yeah. Nick Jonas? No, 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 no. no, no she no, bought no, his no. house. She bought his house. Oh, <laughs> that's what I know. I mean, probably. Cheers, on. Cheers to con controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Well, sticking with women's sports, we have a special guest with us today. I'd like to uh, welcome Nate from Florida. And Nate's already in full Florida mode here. Is that say DeSantis, DeSantis 2024 is your tag? Is this a legitimate statement or are you just fucking around? I'm just fucking around. <laughs> so we want to thank Nate for, for jumping on the podcast with us today. We are going to have a, a conversation in regards to the act that was just signed into place by Ron DeSantis. Um, I don't know if this was planned or not, but day one of Pride Month, uh, Ron DeSantis signed in the Fairness to Women's Sports Act, which is going to omit any transgender women from participating in biological women's sports. Uh, Nate's done a, a good bit of research on this. We want to get a little bit of commentary and we're all going to jump in with, with some personal thoughts. So you mean, thanks, you, Nate. You think it, you think it, it, it might not have been a coincidence or might have been a coincidence? Yeah. What, what, what do you think it wasn't a coincidence? <laughs> uh, Nate, where are we at? You're, you're a Florida boy. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, well, there's no question. I don't think I, that it was not a coincidence. I, I'm sure the timing of it was meant to send a very clear message, um, you know, whether it was meant to, to stir the pot, I, I can't say, but I think, I think more so it was meant to send a very clear message on where f the position that Florida is going to take as it pertains to biological boys competing in girls sports. Yeah. So there's been a lot of controversy surrounding it, right? So essentially Ron Sanders came out and he said that title nine is very important. And we set up women's sports for women to be able to compete. And for the people who don't classify as women, and they're going to use birth certificates, they have the ability to compete in men's sports. So some people are calling this transphobic. Other people are saying that, no, this is, uh, this is a, the right thing to do to protect women's sports. There's been a lot of progress here. Women's sports doesn't just represent progress in women's sports, but it represents progress and equality for women across many stages. And it sets the bar there. Nate, as a father of two daughters yourself, that's why we wanted to have you come on talk a little bit about this. What What is your take on the law specifically itself saying that we're going to go by birth certificate? Do you feel that this does nothing, that this protects women and gives them additional opportunities, or that this is discriminatory when it comes to transgenders? Well, so first off, I'm glad that you um, are at least reporting it the right way, which is that it, it bans transgender males um, who identify as females from competing in girl sports because um, you know in research in this and reading up on it a lot of the headlines read that the bill bans um, biological boys who identify as girls from sports which is obviously not true they they can compete and as boys in boys sports um, they just cannot compete in girl sports so to answer your question, though, there's no there's no doubt in my mind. First of all, I think it's I think it's a sad state of affairs that we require a bill like this. Um, but there's no question that it it protects women's sports, the advances that women have made in athletics. Um, you know, the, to 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 say or 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 try to pretend that there is no distinct advantage to someone who's born a biological male competing in athletics against people who are born biological females is, is not only in the medical and scientific aspect of it, but just even the empirical data that you can look at, it's, it's, not, it's not even in question. Um, and I think it's, you know, just, just one little piece of evidence of that is, where is the story about the biological girl 
who identifies as a boy and wants to play in boy sports. Where's where's the national headlines on that? I, I would I would tell you if I gave you the next two hours to Google your little heart out, you probably will not find a single case where that's where that's an issue. Why? Because there's no competitive advantage that's gained from a girl playing in boys sports, but there is a clear competitive advantage that's gained from boys playing in girls sports. I have actually seen some articles specifically when it comes to wrestling, where people have said that they had an issue and refused to wrestle a girl. Right. But it wasn't a, well, it wasn't a transgender and it was correct. You're correct. There was a, there was a girl that wanted to participate in wrestling. And that was a, I remember that was in like high school or something like that. And there were issues. It was the fact that, you know, again, these kids, these boys are taught not to hit girls, not to do things like, you know, different things like that. Now you're asking to go in there and do, you know, try and cause physical harm with wrestling. Um, and plus it's, it's awkward, especially for a 16 year old boy who's going through puberty. <laughs> um to pop and chub in the middle of a wrestling to, match to be to be wrestling you know a girl and plus he's not gonna like i i don't know i could speak for myself i couldn't speak i can't speak for anybody else but if i if, if i am getting ready to go wrestle a female or if i'm gonna go wrestle frank i'm gonna sure as shit probably try a lot harder to try and kick frank's ass than i am to kick a woman's ass no. I, don't, I don't think that's the case i think a lot of men would have more fear of losing to a woman in a right i think they would go at it like harder that. So in 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 uh, Wilson Elementary or Wilson School District in my area, um, growing up there was a girl. She was probably a year younger than me, and um, and she wrestled from elementary school up. Uh, she was also known as a biter, but she she wrestled. Uh, yeah, she used to bite the shit out of people when she what was. Are we, wait, what are we losing. talking about? Like, I mean, she was like eight years old, so she wasn't you know. Wrestling. Oh, okay. yeah yeah uh she she would just bite <laughs> so um that was the go-to move but but she was able to wrestle and I, i'm sure some of the kids had had an issue or i don't know at eight years old i don't really think that they decipher at that age but at 15 and 16 they're going to um you know nate i i agree with you i i, I well, don't they, they, oh God. no but well i just say they didn't used to decipher but we're trying to create a culture in which they are so the first thing I'll say is if a girl really wants to compete in wrestling, unlike Evan, that's fine. I'll stone cold stun her ass. I'll DDT her right on the fucking mat. I'll body slam her. It doesn't matter to me. But the the because again, there's no competitive advantage that a girl is gaining by competing with boys. There's there's biologically they're at a disadvantage. So if they're able to compete at a high level against boys, then that's that's phenomenal. It doesn't work the other way. And again, I can get into the the, the all of the clear data around that but the the second part of it is is i have a seven-year-old boy i have a 10-year-old daughter they at this point sex gender it's it's not even on their radar they have friends at school who are girls who are boys they don't look at them as sexual objects they don't they don't they're not self-aware identify as this or that they just know that that boys are born with penises and girls are born with vaginas and, and mommies can have babies and daddies can't have babies. That's, that's what they know. We're trying to create a culture where at six, seven, eight, four, three years old, they, I just saw a tick, you saw a TikTok a couple of times. I just saw a TikTok video of a woman celebrating the fact that her six month, ba her six month year old baby boy is gay. How the, how the fuck does she know that? This kid, right. can't, this kid, this kid, you know, he's drooling and shitting on himself, but yet he's, he already knows what, what sexual preference he has. I mean, so, you know, we're trying to introduce that earlier and younger and younger and younger. I, I agree with you, Frankie, at eight years old, boys and girls, like my daughter's 10, one of her best friends is a boy. They race each other, they wrestle, they do all this stuff, but, but there's nothing, there's nothing weird or awkward about it. Right. We're creating a society and a culture where we have to make a big deal about it. And, and they have to, you know, distinguish between their gender and, and sexual identity and sexual preference younger and younger and younger, which which is really, I think, victimizing and, and robbing them of their childhood and their innocence. But that's a that's a separate issue. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I was going to talk about I, I don't have any problem um, like the, the stance that I have similar to to Nate's and you know, Gio and, and Rolo, you hop in with your opinion, but I, I, I do not under any circumstance think that a transgender, um, uh, female that is biologically male should participate in female sports. And the, for every reason you talked about, 
it should not happen. The advantages are are biological, uh, scientific, and you can't deny that. If somebody was transgender, biologically male, and and identifies as a female and wants to play male sports, I don't have a problem with that in in their uh, self identifying state. Right, right. now, granted, there's there's going to be I think some social issues that are going to take place, and I think that it would be. Uh, the schools or the, the athletics responsibility to make sure that there's safety precautions taken. I don't have a problem with that, right? If, if somebody identifies as trans, I don't have a problem with that. I really could give two flying shits. Um, if that's what makes them happy, uh, by all means, go ahead. But I do not think that you can be biologically male and compete in female sports. I don't, I don't care what you identify as. Well, Look, look at it this way, a couple couple quick points. One is we always we always distinguish for the most part, particularly in the more physical sports, um, th there's always differentiators so that there's not huge disadvantages. There's a reason there's weight classes in wrestling and weight classes in boxing and weight classes in some of these more physical sports, right? Because because a 270 pound heavyweight boxer cannot cannot go against a welterweight boxer it, it would be it would be suicide for the welterweight right so so there, there there are differences that that we try to make more fair in a number of sports the second thing is you know you you, you said biologically and and scientifically which is a hundred percent true but just look at some of the empirical data that's out there you can fact check me after this if you want but you know the australian the women's australian soccer team was ranked number two in the world they recently just got their asses handed them seven to nothing by a sophomore high school boys soccer team in Australia. 15 year old boys beat the crap out of them. There are currently over 300 male track students in the US today, high school, male high school track students who hold records that are better than the world records set by women in the Olympics. So. There's you, you can look at the scientific and the biological side and say, OK, well, there's a clear difference here. Right. Why are we pretending still that there's that there's not? But also the empirical data shows that there is a significant advantage to men playing women's sports. I think we can all agree with Dave Chappelle that if LeBron James identified as a woman and joined the WNBA, he would score eight hundred and forty points a game. <laughs> it wouldn't even be close, which would be entertaining to watch. But at the same time, if. Um, I can't remember who Reggie Miller's sister, you know, she was this rock star WNBA star. If she had wanted to play in the NBA and could have been competitive at that level, I don't think a lot of people would have had a problem with that. To Frankie's point, no. she's identifying still as a woman. She can she can play there. Um, you know, but but the but the but the other the other side of the coin, I'll just I'll just add and then you know you could you could comment or you know object or or whatever, you know, however you want is it's it still comes back to this this overarching ideology that I don't think anybody actually believes. I think it's part of the woke crowd and the, and the cancel culture. I don't I don't think deep deep down even the president who seems to want to make this his legacy on on transgender and transgender sports. I don't think that even they actually believe half the crap they say. For example, he has stated a number of times that a trans woman is a woman, right? So a, a someone who's born biologically male identifies as a woman, they are a woman. Well, two, two things with that. Number one, and, and he's made the case that there is no biological advantage, that a woman who trains hard and works hard can compete with any man, and that it's sexist to say that somehow women are at a disadvantage to men when it comes to physical activities and sports. If that's true, why have girl sports at all? just all sports can be co-ed. I mean, if there is no difference between girls and boys on, on an athletic level, on a physical level, we don't need to differentiate anymore. We could just have everybody compete with, with each other. But the other reason it's not true is because it never matches the, the rhetoric and other things that they promote. For example, Dr. Rachel Levine. Everybody knows who she is, right? Frank and I are very familiar. I'm sure you are, being from Pennsylvania. Right. So she's what secretary of health, whatever it is. Assistant, and they make a really assistant. Assistant, yeah. right. So they, they make a big deal about the fact that she's the first transgender woman to be put in that position. Why are we even quantifying it as a transgender woman? If women are women, 
then she's just another woman that's been put in that position. She's not the first. Lots of women have had that position. So either we're going to differentiate and say she's a transgender woman, which means there is a difference between trans women and women, or there is no difference. And why are we differentiating between that at all? I mean, even even the word transgender at that point then really is kind of politically incorrect, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, get, it, I get what you're give saying. It a, give it a few months and it'll catch up to where it is politically incorrect. It, it, it's very possible. I wouldn't be surprised at all. So your your main point, though, is that you're saying is that men and women physically are different. And when it comes from a strength standpoint, it comes from a, a physicality standpoint. There's just a difference there. And I think that's an interesting point because the, he actually called the act the Fairness in Women's Sports Act in an effort to make it fair. And I think that that's really where he was taking that. But you are seeing a ton of pushback on this, and they're already talking about taking it to uh, the courts yeah. Yeah, to get it taken out of. One of their main arguments is that currently this wouldn't really apply. I've also seen that they had an athlete, a female athlete from Connecticut come down to their base and they're trying to cite that well, because there's nobody that's been impacted at this by or by this in Florida. I mean, a counter to that obviously would be, there's nothing wrong with preemptively preventing a problem that you can see foresee as being a problem. The biggest issue I, I see with the outrage on it is it does seem fairly just straightforward. Like there's, there's sex and there's gender and people want to go and have conversations about how many different genders there are. And that's fine. And some people don't think it's fine. That's fine too. But when it comes to sex, there really are two sexes or am I wrong here? Are there more than two sexes? It's, it's <clears throat> simple. No, for, 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 However long, however long you think the world has existed, whether you think it's existed for 20,000 years or 20 billion years or 120 billion years, boys have always been boys and girls have always been girls. Male means male and, and female means female. And there, there is no debate when it comes to the – I mean we're talking about the most basic human anatomy here. Men are born with penises. Women are not. Men are born with prostates. Women are not. Women are born with ovaries and a uterus. Men are not. Men's bodies produce testosterone at a much higher rate. That gives that physical advantage, particularly in those starting in those high school years as, as men go through adolescence and puberty versus women go through adolescence. This isn't, this isn't one beatnecks opinion down in Florida who owns too many guns. This is, By the way, he's originally from Italy, just in case anybody was wondering. Well, I lived there for a while, Evan. Um, this is centuries and centuries of of of, and, and, and there's no, there's no, and, and so to your to your thing, like if you look at the original definition of sex or gender, rather, sex is in there, a person's sex. Now, now one one thing that the that the left has done a lot of is start to literally force dictionaries and, and, and resources to redefine. Webster, <laughs> Webster's part. changed a large yeah. number of to, definitions. To, con to conform to the narrative, which is, mm. which is insanity. So like you say, well, there's, there's, there's sex and there's gender. Well, okay, if that's the case, then define for me gender. Define for me what is a female. Can you define that for me? You're, well, so look, here's the thing. Gender is fluid is the argument, right? And then so sex, is bi the, sex is biological. So basically female is any – so so really then you're saying there is no differentiator. We're back to everybody's exactly the same. Because I don't know. It, I just, look, I just did my taxes and yeah. it asked me if my son was male or female. And I was like, ooh, somebody's getting canceled TurboTax. Somebody's <laughs> getting canceled. Well, I mean – Hopefully the IRS – Fucking please. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a good point because TurboTax is asking the question for the IRS. Yeah. So technically, right. this is a government issue. Well, sure. It's uh, look, so there has been some spillover here, right? There's been some spillover. Uh, Geo sent out an article the other day mentioning how there is – this is spilled into the Olympics. This is spilled in the Olympics when it comes to powerlifting, and there may be a, somebody who's transgender competing – in the women's powerlifting events. I don't know much about it. Nate, are you familiar with this scenario? I was told that you might be. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm as familiar as probably anybody. I, I wouldn't say that I'm intimately familiar, but I, I think I think you pretty much just encapsulated it there. I, I think I think he's from Australia, if I'm not Correct. mistaken. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uh, a biological male identifies as a female is 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 
branded a female powerlifter in Australia and wants to compete on the women's national Olympic team for powerlifting. And um, it's, it's now, like you said, it's trickled into the Olympics where the Olympic commission has to decide whether or not they're going to let him, her compete um, at, at, at a global level. And, and, you know, I think part of the reason it's getting a lot of attention is of course it's, it's precedence, right? So, I mean, um, the, the women's the USA women's soccer did pretty well uh, the, the, the last women's world cup. I can't wait till next year or, uh, or, or two years whenever they play again. And, and, you know, they get absolutely trounced by 14 German dudes um, identifying as women because that's the precedent that will, that will get set here. If they, if they allow it in powerlifting, they have to allow it in every other, you know, major sport. They have to allow it in javelin. They have to allow it in track and field. They have to allow it in, you know, so on and so forth. So um, my understanding is there's, there's some complicated aspects of it because there's what the Olympic commission can rule on, but Japan is, I think the ones who are hosting the Olympics. So, Mm -hmm. so they could potentially weigh in on that and, and, and say, um, you know, that they're not going to allow that to occur within, within their country, but the Olympics are supposed to transcend country law, you know? So it, it, yeah. it does kind of complex, um, you know, from, from that standpoint, as far as, you know, what if what the Olympics rules on con conflicts strongly with the hosting countries rules or laws or, you know, and, and in this case, Japan is a fairly, modern progressive country you know but but what if this was being held in qatar <laughs> you know where I, I think homosexuality is still a sin it and, certainly and is in palestine by, they arrest by, people um, in palestine you know uh no, i meant to say Sense. a crime not even a sin. you Sense know possible death. By death. yeah let alone yeah. transgenderism so you know what would no what would actually qatar you're wrong there nate you're actually wrong there most most um most people who are in those locations actually are transgendered because it's not considered gay if you are gay you can be sentenced to death which is why transgender is a very popular avenue to go down um in the muslim world because you can look it up geo's geo's questioning this yeah visibly not verbally, but visibly. I, mean, I, 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 I will say on, on that on that point, I haven't heard that. So uh, until until Evan proves you yeah. wrong, I have no doubt to. I have no yep. reason to tell you. So, so what I find interesting about the Holy Olymp- Olympic piece is somebody, one of the professional female weightlifters out of, I believe, Belgium, has come out against this, saying that she believes that it's unfair, and a lot of the argument for inclusiveness of letting somebody who's transgender compete is that it's unfair to that person. So now you have two people saying the same thing. I should be able to compete because it's unfair if I can't. Somebody else saying they shouldn't be able to compete because it's unfair if they do. And now we're getting into the point where it's like, okay, this is becoming more clear that this is really just an argument of things people want as opposed to an argument of what you were mentioning before, Nate. There are physical differences and there are physical categories. I really liked what you did with the boxing boxing piece. People do move up and down in weight classes, but even if you move marginally. up too far, marginally, some move a little bit more than others, but you have to be cleared to, to get into those weight classes. You can be denied based on physical safety or competitive advantage and it's similar where in a lot of these combat sports you know they do have divisions even for male and female where males are not allowed to compete ever in those female arenas well, which but- we fought for right so at some point people have to realize are we going against women are we just flat out going against everything and all the progress that women made and that's really yes, my big argument it, with it is yeah, that absolutely women women did so much and there and there are women's rights movements and women are constantly trying to get equal footing on a lot of things and title nine was so important to women's rights and we we did all these things to make it so that we could have uh categories for women and now it seems like we're trying to take them away that, well, I agree, but 100%. You know, I think, I think what, just to kind of bring us full circle one of the things that you said and and, and i'm not i'm not picking on it but like you said where you know, you have two people saying the same thing. You have this Belgian weightlifter saying it's unfair if this transgender is allowed to compete and the transgender saying it's unfair if I'm not allowed to compete, right? I think is what you said. But that's 
that's where the false narrative piece comes in. And, 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 it, and even with the bill in Florida, no one is denying this Australian power lifter the right to compete. He is allowed to compete all day long in the men's category because he's, he's a dude. So nobody's, nobody's, you know, again, if, if I weigh in at a certain weight class, I, I can compete. I might get my ass kicked fighting Mike Tyson because I'm fat and out of shape and, and he's, he's all muscle and, and, a, and a brute, but I, nobody's denying me the right to compete. But if you're again, a welterweight boxer, and now they say, you're going to have to fight the heavyweight champion of the world. And you say, well, that's not, that's not fair. It's not a fair fight, right? Like it, it has nothing to do with your skill. It has nothing to do with how long you've trained or they've trained longer or they've trained harder. It has to do with just basic, physical differences between you and them that make that fight unfair. And it's, it's no different with, again, especially when you're talking about weightlifting and, 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 you know, physical feats, wrestling, javelin, you know, those types of things, shot put where we're obviously there's even more so than track or some of these, these uh, team sports, there's a clear physical advantage. So what, one of the points that you brought up, so Laurel Hubbard, who is, the Australian weightlifter that is in question here. So she actually transitioned from the male sport nine years ago in 2012, when at the time he was not performing very well. So at the age of 43 is already lifting weight that she knows is going to obtain a gold medal at 43 years old in the Olympics after failing nine years ago against male competition. Right. And I'm not saying that that's why Laurel did this, but I'm saying it's an opportunity that was clear and present. How did Laurel perform in those previous games? I I, no, we never made it to the Olympics. This was just other, other weightlifting competitions. And I, I would have to go back and get stats on that. But, um, the transition happened nine years ago and at 43, is already set to basically walk away with the weightlifting titles in in almost every aspect that that Laurel is going to go uh, in. But, that, but that's a trend. That's exactly what occurred. You brought up this track star in Connecticut. That's exactly what occurred in Connecticut. It's what got me banned on Facebook. Was posting an article that One that in last. In the last three years, two biological males have won over 15 state championships. And one of those biological males, you can look it up, was competing as a boy and didn't even make the track team. He was ranked like 460th in the state or something. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't, not not only was he not a good track, track athlete, he wasn't even a competitive track athlete. He's like, he was like Evan in soccer, right? He was just riding the bench. He never got any time, right? And and all of a sudden, to Frankie's point, like he knows what his times are, right? So you can look at that and all of a sudden go, okay, well, my times aren't good enough to make the top 450 in the state, but they're good enough to win every year, year in and year out, every competition against girls. And he trained and get a scholars and get a scholarship and go to school. Can free they get and... scholarships? I mean, what's the end goal there? Fame and fortune. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think like, scholarships are on the back, table. Back I, would, the, I would back back to the point of the Olympics, right? Like we we have a transgender who competed in the Olympics, Bruce Jenner. Now imagine Bruce Jenner was as a gold medalist, right? Gold gold medalist, mm-hmm. winning sure. athlete. Imagine that Bruce Jenner was was competing as Caitlyn Jenner. He could have entered every competition that would have had to deal with the track and field category and would have won. The guy's a physical specimen, right? Now, also, we need to be clear, right? There are much better women athletes than any of the four of us sitting here that would crush us. And Oh, my God. Know, yeah, right, absolutely destroy us. There's, there's, Katie, Katie Ledecky, who I can't wait to see compete in this upcoming Olympics, would destroy yeah, all of there's, us. There's a handful. We could, we could, we don't no need to rattle names because there's, there's tons. Every, every female Olympian that's going to compete in these Olympics from any country will probably beat us in their category, hands down. Oh, uh, yeah. I wouldn't even get off the couch. There's, 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 there's female wrestlers that identify as females that would kick my ass, kick your ass, and everybody else's ass on here, right? There's female boxers, yeah. female MMA artists, not doubting that. They've also trained for it. They've also done all these things. And they, you know what? Maybe they're just better athletes. But we're not talking about us. We're talking right. about actual athletes 
right. male athletes identifying yeah. as women and 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 not they might not be good enough to win those events that these individuals were talking about but they already have an advantage right i just like a, a person who's six foot five has an advantage over me and five foot seven nate in playing basketball well five nine and three quarters first of all and second of all um nobody nobody nobody's make the argument that 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 by default as a no, male I, every I, right, no every male is better than every female at sports to, to evan's point obviously there are tons of females that are way better than a lot of males but all you have to do is take any olympic category take track and field compare the top men's times to yeah. the top women's times compare weightlifting compare any event with with the best men in the world against the best women it's not even close even to the point as i said earlier there are high school men who have records in some of these olympic events that are that are that are better records than the world record of all time the, the greatest women in that sport so again that's that's both scientific and empirical data to to, to pretty much prove beyond a reasonable doubt and I, I do think, you know, you mentioned somebody mentioned earlier that there's going to be court challenges. And I know, you know, Florida, we're getting a lot of attention maybe because DeSantis, you know, signed it on the first day of gay pride or, or whatever the case. But we're not the first one to sign a bill like this. Idaho led the charge on this. Um, Tennessee, Alabama, I think just recently signed very similar. There's another another state to Mississippi. OK, um, you know, and, 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 and it. I do think it's probably long overdue, unfortunately, where the Supreme Court is going to have to weigh in on this issue and kind of address this growing, really transgenderism, you know, and, and what what that allows for where a person's right to identify as whatever they want. And we say, well, who cares? Right. And, and where that crosses over into starting to impede other people's rights and 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 actually disenfranchise in this case women in sports or or whomever you know in other walks of life so when if i buy a life insurance policy off of you nate can i identify as a female you know the answer to that question no which is why these insurance companies that are weighing in on how they support the lgbtq community are fo are so full of shit. and i actually called out one that i work with and said if you actually believe and, and the insurance company's position is that a trans woman is a woman, then you should underwrite them as a woman, right? And they're like, well, no, we still underwrite them as the biological sex they were born with. It's like, because just like, and, and that goes back to my point of, I don't think deep down the woke crowd even believes this. It's just, it's the woke thing. It's the progressive thing. We're jumping on the bandwagon. Like, like a lot of other things that I don't think they really, I don't think most of them really believe um, that autistic kid from the Netherlands or whatever that says the world's going to blow up in 10 years if we don't all start recycling a lot more and driving electric cars. But that's the, that's the woke thing to say right now. So we're all buying in on that. So, Nominate, nominated uh, for a Nobel Peace Prize. So yeah, strong. well. I mean, so is, and, and Obama got one and, you know, I mean, yeah. Trump was nominated think, for two. I, I think the hardest part for me on, on this is that you you know you say it's a very progressive thing, and it's tough for me to get behind something that is progressive that deliberately goes against the rights and and fairness for women. It's really really hard for me to view something like that as being progressive. So uh, now let me now let me let me hijack just for a second and ask a question because I think that's a I think that's a, a hundred percent you know where I'm coming from and with daughters. So where are the feminists on this one? Where are the women's rights? That's people? what I was going to bring up. Why are they not speaking well, out and coming out and saying this is bullshit? This is taking women back. So they are, they are, but they're getting shut down. The ones that are the, the the true feminists that are coming out against this are getting shut down because this movement is the newer movement and getting more ratings. It, so, in my in my opinion, the woke movement and the progressive. Movement. Correct. I mean, we we all know that this is. I mean, I mean, like any way that people look look at it, right? It's it's all when when governments get involved, the politicians get involved, or corporations get involved, and it's all it's all politically based, right? And I think Mike or Nate, somebody hit on that where they said, you know, you talk to these companies, they actually don't really believe this; they just do it because 
it's going to be whatever right so i mean just like because it's it's a it seems to be a very right-sided charge that this is not okay so the left is going to embrace it and prop it up and they're going to drown out of there because there's been plenty of females that have come out and said no this isn't okay it's unfair they had the what was it the boxer that got a jaw busted or oh yeah let's he, bring rogan on the podcast because he's got some shit to say yeah i mean like there's there's so there's been there's been plenty of people who have come out and spoken against this it's just you're not gonna hear it they're not getting canceled or they're not getting called like shut down but just not getting the airtime because they're not as loud nobody's right. as loud as well as, you're as, only as loud as the media lets you get correct we're very much in this in this phase right now where if we are not accepting of of everything and it's and don't get me wrong like i like if you're gay you're gay man i still love you no matter what right i don't care you know i don't care about the color of your skin i don't care what your sexual orientation is and by all means if you want to act like a girl or dress up like a girl and you're a boy or vice versa go do it go do it um you know, I don't care. I'm still going to, I'm still going to treat you the same. Uh, you, you know, we can still be friends and still, you know, whatever you uh, like, I, I don't care. But when it comes to the sports, like we've been saying, it, it is definitely, it, it's a difference. It's a huge difference. I mean, that's why there's men's tees, women's tees, and then a senior tee, right? There's a senior tee because as that testosterone starts to drop off, as you get older, you start to lose your strength. You start to lose those hormones Good that are point. coming in. That's why they have that. It's not because you're no longer a man. You're still a man, but you're, you're, you're losing that edge that you would have had at 40 years old, at 30 years old, at 25 years old, now that you're 65 years old, right? And we have women's tees. If you put any player on the PGA Tour and put them on the LPGA, there would be no LPGA Tour. There would be no females competing in that sport. When the average PGA Tour golfer drives 275 yards – and the average female LPGA golfer drives 210, 215 yards. That's a big difference. That's a shot difference. That turns a, a par four for on a ladies' tee into an easy par three on a men's tee. Right. Yeah. I so for me, and maybe I'm I'm a little bit more progressive from a social aspect. Like I literally don't care how somebody wants to identify. I, I don't, I support it. If that's what makes you happy, this world's fucked up enough. If you can find happiness in, in how you want to act, um, how you want to identify, that's fine. Where I have a problem with it is what my daughter's three years old, right? So she hasn't gotten into sports yet, but if that's the direction she wants to go in, whether it's gymnastics, softball, field hockey, whatever she wants to do, I'm all about it. I'll coach, uh, yeah, hell this nice pink and purple band that i have on here that i've had for the last four months i will wear this until this shit breaks in half i don't care and i wear it with suits no problem i i'll wear a pink barrette in my hair with my daughter going to target i don't care i have no shame in the dad game right so if she wants to do that but then you have a a boy biological boy coming in and kicking her ass or or just taking over a sport I have an issue with that. It's taking away from her ability to excel with equal competition in her sport, right? The other the other issue I have is is when it is intrusive in uh, a bathroom or a shower scenario, right? Outside of that, I don't care. I literally don't care. If you don't care, then you shouldn't care about the bathroom scenario because that individual identifies as a female, Frank. So you do care. So don't say you don't care because you do care. Because no, no, if no, 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 this has nothing to yeah. do with this has nothing to do with physical prowess or unfair advantage. That's the way somebody identifies. You don't care. So don't bring up the shower thing because you don't care. I you don't care both how ways on that. No, I can. Be, care how I can identify. because me as a big bearded gun toting piece of shit from Pennsylvania. So can you walk care. in can walk into a female's bathroom, say that I'm a female and whip my dick out. So you do and care. right. But again, I mean the people who genuinely feel that they are a female and they want to dress they want to the way they want to dress, be who they want to be. I'm telling you, this is what I stated before you jumped in, is my line draws at bathroom, shower stall, sports, where there's an intrusion of that biological separation. So, so let me ask you a question. So, because... I, I kind of agree with that, but I think you care more than, the, I mean, I get what you're saying. I get your point. Um, but then 
there's a couple things, right? So if, if, if what you're saying is, well, you don't care if, if people identify as whatever they want to identify as, right? right? First of all, there's an acknowledgement there that they're not really that, that, that they can identify that even though they're not, right? I mean, because- but I could, because, I could because, care less. Well, because, because again, if biologically, if we're going to say that a trans woman is a woman, then you can't discriminate against them coming into a bathroom or, or even playing sports for that matter. So, so, you know, that comes back to it's, it's a mental illness and and whatever. But the second piece of that is why, why does this only apply to gender? So you don't have a problem if I identify as black then, right? I mean, if I want you to call me Lamont, and I want to identify as a black male or, or whatever, like, why, why is this? And, and I want, I want affirmative action. I want my kids to get all the benefits of potentially um, grants and scholarships to go to school for cheaper because we identify as African-Americans. I think I was born the wrong race or we identify as Latinos or we identify, because when you think of biologically, the pigmentation augmentation of someone's skin color is far less biologically different than actual genitalia, ovaries in a uterus, chromosomes. all of these other chromosomes. What's that? chromosomes, chromosomes, right. horm- you know, I mean, all of that. I mean, really a skin color. We always say like race is skin deep. So so what what differentiates me from an African-American or a Latino or an Asian is far more trivial and really less biologically different or anatomically different than what separates a male from a female. So then, you know, organizations that are inclusively African-American would have to accept me. And, 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 and I think that's where really the, the line, like you say, the line is at the bathroom and, and that kind of thing. But the line is, if you want to identify, if Frankie, if you want to call yourself a woman, knock yourself out. But I shouldn't have to. Just because you right. want to pretend to be a woman doesn't mean that I should have to pretend. Sure, you are. but w- what I'm what I'm saying, and this is all personal choice. I'm not saying Nate has to. What I'm saying is, if Tyrone walks up to me and says he wants to be called Tiffany, I'm going to be like, "All right, Tiffany, I got no problem with that." Like th- that doesn't bother. And me. That's totally cool. I do have a problem with it because I feel like I'm enabling his mental illness. And, 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 the, and the issue there right. is because, I mean, seriously, if Evan says to me, I think I can fly and I'm going to prove it by jumping off a six story building, I'm not going to say, yes, yeah, Superman, you go, you get on with your bad self. Right. And, and you could say, well, you know, it's different. That's he's, he's going to harm himself, whatever. But the point of the matter is at the end of the day, I don't want to enable a mental illness when other people say they're this or they're that, if they say they're Jesus Christ, if, you know, we, we say, well, no, this person needs help. They need, they need to get the help that they, et cetera. So, but, but the I'd slap him on the ass and ask him to take this water and turn it into wine. Well, but if, all right, but if, I, I think where Frankie was going with this was, and I, I, I kind of see it, right? So there's the social aspect. He's saying people, he, it doesn't bother. People can go ahead and do whatever they want to do. It doesn't bother him. But laws, and he wrote in the, the bathroom law, and I, this is the way I took it anyway. You know, laws are not there and set in place to police the people who are not abusing the system. Laws are in place to police the people who want to abuse the system. So you might have somebody who is transgender and who's not going to do any harm by using the bathroom of what they're identifying at. But unfortunately, right. there are a lot of people who will take advantage of those situations and cause much more harm in those scenarios. So he draws the line there. And I think that's what he was trying to say. I don't, it is. I, correct it, me no, if I'm no, wrong. Mike, sure, you're, sure. you're right. Well, Honestly, and, and Nate, I, I respect your opinion. Every, Believe me, I think everybody's willing to have it. Wait, wait, let let Frank finish. Let Frank finish. So what what I'm saying is, in my opinion, and again, this is burly pencil tucky with too many guns. If if somebody truly identifies as a transgender woman, I I would have very little to no fear if that transgender woman fully engulfing, and I mean 110% believing that scenario goes into a bathroom, I don't think that person would do any harm to my daughter, right? What I'm saying is when you carte blanche, open up that bathroom door to somebody like me who says I'm a woman going into the bathroom with, I mean, she's three now, so she's not going in any bathroom by herself, but uh, my daughter at five or eight or whatever, 
that absolutely i have a huge issue with that and and nate and again i respect your opinion i'm just saying that i have a different one yeah so so two two really quick points on that so the first is just on the bathroom issue it's not really about a bathroom i have two daughters if you are in the stall next to my daughter i don't really care right i mean right. you're in your stall right it, it, we, we call it the bathroom law. It really has nothing to do with bathrooms. What was embedded in that law was locker rooms, girls' mm -hmm. shower rooms, right? right? That's a different story. And why then can't male prisoners in prison start identifying as women and get transferred to women's prisons? I mean, you're not going to have a single man left in a male in a male prison. We're all going to be women. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think they prison. are doing that. Well, they, they, they're trying to. They're trying to, but but most people acknowledge in that case or whatever, you know that that half the time it's BS. But but the my my point back to the acknowledging, not acknowledging, calling them Tiffany. And let me give you a real life example because this hit home recently. Is a company that that I'm affiliated with put out a notice that everyone associated with that company would have to sign an attestation that they will not engage in hate speech within the offices. Well, how do you quantify hate speech was the first question. If I don't use 32 pronouns, is that hate speech? So when yeah, we no, go there's got to be definitions. Well, so when we go down that road of, and again, if you want to call Tyrone Tiffany, <clears throat> hey, great. You call, you can call Tyrone asshole if you want to. I think that's your right to freedom of speech. But if I don't, is that not all of a sudden hate speech? Could I be terminated for being discriminatory? And that's where I think we get into a really yeah, I would agree a, with that. Really touchy, you know, area there. That's interesting. Yeah, no, so I'm, Nate's I'm saying, that. you know, thirty-two. Do I have to go with thirty-two pronouns? Frankie says parameters have to be set, and now it comes into question of who's the authority that gets to dictate what right. those parameters yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. The parameters around something that scientifically and medically is not valid to start with. So yeah, I mean, it does, say, it does become complicated. It does become complicated. Something that was very simple, not that long ago, as far as saying he, her, they, they, et cetera. Uh, and honestly, I'm not super familiar with all the pronouns. I haven't, I haven't gone through it yet where I, it was with a large organization had to have different ones for everybody, but I can see where it would be, be complicated or you might unintentionally offend somebody but as soon as you have something on books from a human resources standpoint you open yourself up to liability right and it's going to be very complicated to see where that liability would land it, it, to accuse somebody to say well they're intentionally harassing me and that person saying i had no clue and was that wasn't my intention at all generally lands on the party that wrote those hr procedures and therefore it's the company who ends up being liable well, and we're talking about it as applies to obviously transgenderism because that's the topic. But I mean, you could you could you could take that and blanket it to anything else. If you support a certain political candidate that some people think is racist and a white supremacist and 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 panders to the Ku Klux Klan, is that leave hate Biden out? Leave Biden out of this. What's <laughs> oh boy. I mean, is yeah. this is this the point where even this conversation about hey, should we, you know, how does this impact women's sports? And now we've gone down this political road. Where is this just a political well, thing? Well, it's been politicized. It is yeah, absolutely. Right? It absolutely is. And and here's the thing: like I'm the one that that is probably, and I I don't know, Rolly, you 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 might be closer to me. I'm not sure. I'm probably the one that's more centrist, uh, certainly further left than Nate, right? But I am also, <laughs> I I am also very on on the far right you, you scenario you, you on a, on a lot it. of things, right? But, but and that's the problem is that line is cut straight down the fucking middle. It's cut straight down the fucking middle, and you can't be you can't be one step you, to the left and one step to the right. You can, but but too many people are taking sides. You're right; they're digging in. I, I'm all left or I'm all right. And and then we get these huge issues. What's interesting to me is this is this subject something that has been politicized or yes. was this subject created by politics? Oh, I see what you're saying. No. Wow. Uh no. that's a good question. I think there's an opportunity in politics to 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 create it to what it is. I think that the LGBTQ community um ha has has wanted the inclusivity. And I think that um, the the 
left has has looked at that as an opportunity to not just take the minority vote but also take that vote there, there's no there's no doubt that over the course of our history right like it's, it's not me um I don't, like i'm not i'm not homosexual um you know i i don't think anybody here on this guy here right i don't think anybody in this call is right but like to say that there hasn't been issues with uh, or dis- discriminatory acts towards homosexuals well, would be a lot because that's definitely been the case, right? Absolutely. And, and, and I, I have family way, members that, that right. are. And so so I've to saw, say it, it. it definitely wasn't created by that. And and there are, it used to be cross-dressing, right? And then it turned into tranny, trannies or well, what's the trans, 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 what are they? Transsexual. Transgenders. Transvestites. Um, that's exactly. the one I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, that was that was it. That was a thing. But it was still weird and off. And like they probably weren't treated right. But at the end of the day, so like it was always an issue. So I think, Frank, you would say they're one of that inclusivity. Right. Um, you know, like, I, again, I have no issue with people being gay, but I remember being younger, being like a little weirded out about that. Right. My, my mom's cousin is, is gay. Right. And I knew that growing up. And I, I you know, I love the guy. Um, and I knew that and it wasn't weird. I get OK. I misspoke. It wasn't weird to me because I grew up with that, right? I was never worried about that, right? Mike, you saw me get sexually abused by four gay campers in Cape May. I don't remember. Holy I, shit. How much time do we have left on this podcast? Ask, ask, ask any, remember, how do you tell? How do you tell? How do you tell when a watermelon's ripe? And he's and the guy goes, when it's soft in the middle, and he squeezed my ass. <laughs> It was me, you, oh, and Messer. Oh, we were in Cape May. I remember the. I remember, I remember the guys who had the trailer across. It, it, was, it wasn't it. those two guys. I'm sorry, it wasn't those two guys. It was the other two that were the camper down, not the ones that let us use their camper, right? But like to me, I'm like, oh shit, that was weird. I was like, nah, man, I'm good. I'm not making a big deal out of it, right? But I mean, technically, I guess I could ruin that guy's political career if he ever ran for office. Um, but like the thing is, is like, yeah, but you I, smiled. I'm smiling now as I tell the story. Yeah, that's I'm what like, I'm saying. That was, that was not my reaction when yeah. it happened. But uh, I, didn't, I, I wasn't like, I was like, like, it no, was just it, like, it was just like, it was like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, not cool, man. Uh, probably the same reaction that a girl would have if I put my arm around her and I just squeezed her butt. Right. Even though I think he's, yeah. Um, like, it, it, so, but what I'm saying is they've, they've always fought for that. Right. So them wanting to be included and to, and to fight for a more inclusivity uh type of role like i get that but then i think it got politicized because it's like hey we can wrap our arms around these people and really become this party of the victims and make people feel sorry for us i mean it's the same again it goes back to the same thing with minorities right like that's that changed in the 60s you know, when that started to shift or maybe the 50s when the republicans and democrats seemed to switch and the democrats the light bulbs came on and they said Hey boy, we can really wrap our arms around this and gain this this favorable piece here. So I think an interesting question, and I don't have the answer, and I would actually love to 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 talk to some more gay and lesbian people and, and get their perspectives on this because some that I've talked to actually have a, 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 an opinion that's much closer to mine than maybe the progressive left. But I don't know when. And the only thing I can really maybe if you go back and look at is maybe it was a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I'm not really sure when the gay and lesbian community decided to take up this cause as their own, because to me, and and again, this is just Nate's, you know, call it ignorant opinion. There is a, a, a very succinct difference between two consenting adults who say I'm attracted to someone of the same sex and I want to be able to have all of the things with that individual that people who are attracted to people of the opposite sex have, whether that's owning a home together, getting a loan together, adopting children together, getting married, whatever. That's very, very, very different in in my mind, at least as I wrap around it, as I am going to pretend, I'll use quotes, that's my word, to be something that biologically, anatomically, chromosomally, I can never be. And you should pretend along with me because it makes me feel good. Like those are, and I should be allowed to play girl sports and I should be allowed, like all of these other things that have now kind of layered on top of that. It's, it's so different. So like, I don't, I don't equate gay and lesbian rights and equality 
which I'm out all for, to the same as as some of these transgender issues, but they all kind of get lumped into LGBTQ, you know, issues. Right. So so here's here's my take on it. Like as as men, right? There's 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 four dudes, uh, and we all identify as that, so we can say it. Four dudes on this show right now, and everybody would would probably or, or interchange it with four other dudes dressed differently, right? I'm wearing camo shorts and a fucking a bear drinking a keg type scenario, but I could be in a suit tomorrow morning. Like everybody dresses differently to what makes them happy. There's some people that are hillbilly wife beater cargo short scenario. And there's the more preppy dresser, right? So everybody dresses different. They function different. And I think that that same individual could possibly want to dress in a female sense and want to act female. So I don't have a problem with that scenario because I feel like that's just the direction they want to go in. We're all dressing differently. We all function differently in our day-to-day lives. And, and to me, that's, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. You guys already know where I draw the line, but I, I just, I don't have a problem with somebody dressing or acting in a certain way that, that makes them happy. But I, I do have, have very kind of, you know, hard lines in the sand as far as what I think is, should be legal um, in a sense of the, this sex, I guess we have to define it sex instead of gender, the sex side of things. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't think any of us have an issue with the way that anybody dresses, you know, again, there's a big, like, 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 again, if you, if you want to identify as a woman, by all means, identify as a woman, just, I don't have to identify you. I don't have to identify you as a woman, which is exactly what you're saying. Frank, in other words, that's exactly what you're saying. I don't think you should have to, I'm saying me personally, I don't have a, if you want to be called Tiffany, I'll call you Tiffany. But that's different, right? Like I, right. Look, look. I'm ex, I, I'm I'm offering that as a person. I'm saying fine. Nate has a different view on that, saying that he feels that this is more of a disorder scenario and he doesn't want to enable that. And that's fine. We have different opinions, and that's fine. I'm saying from a legal standpoint, you have chromosomes, and and there has to be those lines drawn from a a shower scenario locker room scenario bathroom scenario and sports scenario so so you're so so basically you are not identifying that biological male as a female is what you are saying you are not identifying them correct but i'm willing but i am willing to if that's from a social standpoint i am willing to absolutely try and and make them happy and enjoy their life as they are from a social standpoint but from a biological sex standpoint, no, you, you're not playing boy sports and you're not going into a, a, a female locker room and swinging dick around in the shower. And just As, to be clear, I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to, to, to beat up Frankie about that. If that's the impression. No, 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 no. This, this shows cheers to controversy, man. It's, right. if he, if, it's if Frank, well, But if you're willing to pretend with them, which is really what you're saying is, no, they're not. They're not, they're not women. They're not biologically women. But if they want to pretend to be that, I'll pretend along with them. If that makes them happy, we'll play house. We'll play dress up. It's cool. And and that's fine. Like, do that. Again, my, my point, and, and we can move on from it, is really more just the we're, we're in a world now, though, where I'm not allowed not to do that. Right. I'm not allowed to right. say no. And I I'm disagree with that. And I disagree with I, – I, I do not think that you should not be allowed – Right. I, I think it's a common courtesy. I think it's one that I'm 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 perfectly fine. And I'm not saying I, I don't have a, a he him hashtag on my Twitter. I'm not going to do that. I don't feel like I need to. You can see my beard. You know who the fuck I am. Um, right. So I'm not going to I'm not going to play that game. But in the same breath. In a social aspect or even a work atmosphere, if if somebody identifies in a different direction with a different name. Uh, honestly, I don't think it's I- impactful to me. And again, Nate, believe me, this this whole show is controversy. So if if we were just all agreeing and powwowing, it, this show would be fucking pointless. So right. I don't have a problem with it. And, and I said this a thousand times. I respect what you're saying because that's your opinion and, and you're allowed to have it just like I am. Um, I'm, I'm just saying I don't feel it's an inconvenience to me until it crosses 
and again, they're my lines, right? So, so now we get into a position where me as an individual, I'm creating these lines. You guys are, you guys are essentially saying the same thing, right? You're, you're willing to adhere to certain requests. You don't, neither one of you want to be told that you have to do something from a legal or compliance standpoint. Yeah. Right. I want to hear Rolo's that. opinion. My yeah, opinion? You, you've been a wet blanket in the middle of this, buddy. You gotta, <laughs> no, you gotta I mean, I, I say, my opinion is like if somebody comes up to me and says my name is X, Y, Z, that's how I'm going to address them. I'm not going to question it. I really don't care. It, they can be whoever they want to be. I'm really happy for them. But at the same time, I do want to protect women's rights when it comes to sports. So this bill that DeSantis signed into law does not bother me the way that it bothers some people. Uh, I have a lot of people. I, I have a lot of people in my life who fall into the LBGTQ community plus community. Uh, I was just at an event in Destin, Florida, where I was one of three straight people there. Uh, one of them, one of the other ones, was my wife. And I mean, we they, they I threw on a wig. I mean, we were just these guys. I'll tell you what. Yeah. They can they have can some party, man. Fun, man. They can party. Right. They know how to throw down. But at the same time, where my stake is, is, is definitely protecting women when it comes to sports. I think that women's sports and we we do this a lot. We do this with like athletes contracts. We do this with this. Other, we always want to talk about the extreme. A majority of women who participate in women's sports at the lower levels, like the youth levels through high school are never going to be professional athletes. But these sports teach them other things the same way these sports teach men other things about how to be good people and how to be more confident, how to uh, learn to persevere, how to overcome defeat uh, or failure, and, and it helps them in other parts of their lives. So when you have a, a female athlete who is working hard at something to then go into a role where they're now competing with a biological male – and feeling defeated and that they have no shot or nothing to work towards. It's a very, very dangerous line because yes, we might, it is disheartening. And we might be having this conversation now where yes, there are only five or 10 or 20 scenarios where this applies. But as those numbers grow, the deterioration of women's sports to me would be horrible for the progress that it's made for women throughout it. Now, if somebody wants to say to me that I'm being, uh, that I'm not being, uh, 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 I don't even know the word. I'm like sympathetic inclusive. enough, inclusive yeah. to to the rights of transgenders as applies to there. I will. I would only say that's your opinion. I understand it. If somebody wants to go through all of these things because they feel that they were not born in the sex that they that they want to be, I'm not going to stand in their way. Uh, let them identify how they want to identify. But I, I, I'm with you guys. From a legal standpoint, I don't like it. Some of the other things that nobody, people don't like to talk about, if you want to dive further into my opinion on it, is, and it somewhat got mentioned earlier, from a medical standpoint, it's very expensive to go through the full processes. And that bill has to be paid by someone, somewhere, and, uh, you know, Nate, I believe you mentioned earlier that your insurance companies or some of the partners that you guys have that you deal with do ask you to fill this out and you will be insured or underwritten as your biology, not as your identification. So there are other things that come into play here other than just how we feel or what we think about it. That said, if somebody wants to go through it and pay for all the things that go through it and that makes them feel better as a person, I champion it. I don't. I'm not on the side of like, this is a mental disability where they need to um, be scorned and talked out of it. I understand where some people come from that angle. It's just not my angle. My thing as it pertains to this conversation and what we've been talking about here today really is the protection of women's sports and how it, how it impacts women of all ages becoming adults and what it teaches them, those types of things. Yeah. No, and you know, all, all of the conversation that we've had here, there's been multiple angles, um, definitely multiple opinions, which is exactly why we do this show to begin with. Um, Nate, your, your insight from, from multiple facets, uh, facets from, 
uh, the data that you provided and the examples you provided are spot on. I mean, I agreed with so much of what you said. I think it really just came down to our difference of opinion is uh, more or less a social acceptance of if somebody wants to identify one way, um, I have no problem with that. But there are lines, obviously, that I, that I drew. And, and that's fine. From a sports standpoint, you know, I got a three-year-old daughter. I absolutely have issues. Rollison, you are 100% on point with them going into a sport and knowing, you know, my assumption is 10 years from now when my daughter's 13, 14, 15, uh, if this progresses the way it's progressing now, half the team is going to be biologically male. And she is going to have absolutely no motivation to try and excel at any of those things. And that is terrifying to me. Um, I, I don't want to see it. I want, and to Nate's point, which I thought was brilliant, is if there is no difference, then put them all together and let them fight it out, right? So if there is no difference, now we don't have male and female sports. We bring them all together. Again, I think that would be an absolute travesty. I, I think that our daughters would automatically just walk away from sports. Um, so I don't want to see that happen. But if you're going to claim that direction, then you need to own that possibility. And then there would be no female sports. So it, it's it's tough. It's a tough battle. But, you know, my my lines are, are drawn where they're drawn. From a sports standpoint, I'm sorry. If you have to classify it as sex instead of gender, if you have to classify it as as XX, XY, whatever you have to do to make sure that it is the way it's supposed to be, that that's what we need to do. And and there needs to be more laws put in place for it. Well, one 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 thing too, I just just I'll throw out there is um, if there is this growing number of transgender athletes which there seems to be um it's going to be more opportunistic as we advance so so why not create a completely separate third category you know why not have boys who are biological boys compete with boys i think you know the answer to that i think you know the answer to that well i know the answer to that it's a it's somewhat a rhetorical question but i think it's a fair it's a fair question so then yeah let's set that no, it's and not then, a fair question. It's not a fair question because what we're talking about is not the actual people who are going through the transgender roles. It's the people who are falsely stating that they are transgender just so that they can compete and dominate in these other. No, sports. we're not. No, we're not. If, if you if you them. created a law, if you created a third category that was transgenders competing, you would have a lot less people. Who the, uh, some of these men that you're saying that are winning these medals, they flip back and forth. They're not really feeling that they're transgender. They're just but saying, I, I identify as a female so that I can go ahead and compete. Yeah, but to yeah, Evan's point earlier about, about Caitlyn Jenner, I don't care if they truly identify as a female. They still have a distinct physical advantage. I don't care if they have embraced 100%, believe that they're a female, have gone through operations to have their 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 anatomy at least at least uh, cosmetically altered. It doesn't It doesn't matter. And biologically, they're still a male and they have let's, a let's huge break into advantage. that. Let's break into that real quick. So where do we stand on you guys mentioned earlier that from a political standpoint, you know, from a progressive movement, where does Caitlyn Jenner fall into this now that Caitlyn Jenner herself is running for a political position as a governor of California? Well, Caitlyn Jenner has spoken against biological males competing as girls multiple times on record. Caitlyn Jenner has been emphatic against biological men competing. Well, because Caitlyn Jenner knows sport. it would be not fair. As an Olympic winning Correct. athlete, right. knows that would be unfair. So do people discount Caitlyn's opinion, even though? Yeah, I mean, literally, she, she, she's, she's, the, she's against. She literally just came out and made a statement. The trans community just came out and made a statement says, we don't want her to be our spokesperson. Right. Yeah. She it's was the queen of the spokesperson before but now that she is stating what everybody on this panel is agreeing with it doesn't fit the narrative and and she's getting booted that's why i'm saying the woke movement will eat their own at any fucking second period Absolutely. and, well, I mean, and she, they, she, she does have the most agreed but she she does have the most intact 
right opinion on this. I mean, insight. I mean, from there's really nobody else that has the insight that she has in the category, is there? She's no. the most qualified person you could argue to speak from on. Politi- from a political standpoint, she is absolutely the political most Political and athletic standpoint. Yeah. For what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah from yeah. somebody who's actually gone through those transitions and competed at those high levels. Uh, yeah. Competed and won. Involved. I mean, the top of that level. Sure. Not just, you know, I tried to make an Olympic qualifier and I failed miserably. Like, absolutely the top of the top and and now entering politics uh from a republican standpoint I, i'm sure there's going to be a ton of kickback because the the republican right is has a a very bible heavy base to it um but in the same breath i think that her coming in makes that 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 one piece, that one piece that somebody from the opposite side of the aisle, from a social standpoint, and I, I, I'm trying to say this very distinctly, from a social standpoint, from the other side of the aisle, saying that the Republican base of of the structure standpoint from uh, whether it's tax or business or or whatever makes sense. There's going to be some traction, at least in California. This this is probably she, wouldn't fly in most states, but in California, it, it it might. It might. Is she a Republican or a Democrat? Republican. Okay. That's interesting in its own right. Well, ha, well has Bruce, from what I understand, Bruce, has been has been Republican for his her entire life. his her entire life. Yeah. So, I mean, Republican base the entire life. Again, with the absence of the social aspect. And that's what I'm saying. Like you, you're, you're. She's giving the opportunity to combine the social left, and and but not but bucking the system on the social left. But we'll get, in a certain regard, I hate that term that you're using because you're using the term that the left that the that the that the hardcore liberals do. You're acting like Republicans don't care about social issues, which is absolutely not true. I'm a Republican and I care a lot about social issues. You know, I, I'm sure, Frank, you're a Republican and you care about social issues. Right. Yeah, right? I've probably been like, the most so, left so stop, on, on this So stop whole saying, because that, again, that's where these weird lines get drawn, right? You think George Bush didn't care about social issues, either one of them? You think Trump didn't care about social issues? Do you think, you know, Rand, Rand, Paul, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, John McCain, Mitt Romney, Ron DeSantis, 2024, Ron DeSantis, they all care about social issues. That's just a message that the left uses that Republicans don't care about social issues. Right. We all want to help out our fellow men. We just think we're going to do it in different ways, right? Oh, right. I'm not just going right. to go ahead and give everything to everybody so that they can, so that they can, they can waste it away or, or, or flander it. I'm all about helping people out, right? You made the comment earlier where you're like, you know, hey, like if you want to identify as Tiffany, by all means, identify as Tiffany. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. I don't think you're a woman, but you can I, you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. Just like Nathan can call himself Nate. His name's not Nate. It's DeSantis 2024. Right. <laughs> right. 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 But, but right. you know what I mean? Right. Like, you yeah. can identify. Yeah. You can say that however you want to do it. Right. It doesn't change the fact. Right. But what that, I'm, that I'm that saying, not- for decades, right, for decades, the left has been more social and the right has been more I'm I'm telling you what the perception no, you're, of the you're, world is. You you they have said that they have been more social. Caring about social issues means you care about issues that affect your fellow man. It does. It just there are two different ways to do it. You are they speaking been, incorrect well, truth. I I'm saying that from the narrative That's over better. the last That's twenty better. years, uh, thirty years, media, advertising, whatever you want to call it. The left has been more social oriented and the right has been more fiscal and military oriented. Can we call it fake uh, news? Yes, sure. we can. Absolutely. Please. In Numero Padre, Filio, Spiritu Santi. Absolutely, we can call it fake news. But what I'm saying is we all know what the narrative is. The left is social and the right is capitalistic, right? So I, 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 I you're right. I placated that and I'm sorry. But that was I was kind of stating like that balance of what Caitlyn Jenner brings to a Republican ticket is a social aspect that doesn't fit into a typical media based Republican narrative. Right. 
Now, the Republican side according is to, a little bit more Bible thumper. According, according to the left, because... I, I, I think, and there's, I'm sure, no statistics for this, but the Republican side is way more Bible thumper, right? So her her orientation into the Republican Party is going to be an issue, but in California, it's not. So the Republicans are very Bible bumper. Um, Fucking bumpers. <laughs> God. In, in, in certain parts of the country, they're very much like that. Frank, I don't think you're a Bible bumper. Um, and I'm certainly not Nate might be, but yeah, I know I was being <laughs> facetious. Um, but you're not, and I'm not, and he is. So if that's three re registered Republicans, that's, that's an incorrect statement as well. What those all are, are misconceptions that we have allowed celebrities the media to play out that is not the case right we assume right. that republicans are or jewish people are mainly republicans however all like hollywood is 70 percent jewish and they're right? all liberal they're right all liberal. so so like again it's these are all that's these money weird, strange misconceptions that we allow to go out like like if right. you have i'm actually i'm actually a registered independent believe it or not so you can't vote in primaries? I no, I do not. I refuse to be put in a box. I, well, you can I, vote, I, but by the I way, that's the labels. dumbest. First of all, that's the dumbest thing ever because you can vote for whoever you want to. So just, just I want to because Rolo kind of threw out this question. Now we kind of took it like back to the political side of it. So just to 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 just bring it back, Pull it back. I, think it, I think your original question really centered more around less around the politics and more around if you took politics out of it and, and the flipping back and forth, and you had somebody who fully embraced and lived their life as a woman and went through all this expensive intrusive surgery and all of these other things to whatever degree they've gone to. My stance and my point is as it pertains to the issue tonight, and, and that really is women's sports, it's irrelevant. I, I don't care what lengths they've gone to and how, absolutely convinced and and they and how much they've embraced their their womanhood they still have a very clear very distinct physical advantage when it comes to athletics over biological girls and and they should not be allowed to compete for that reason as they can compete as the gender that they were born I'm actually still intrigued by this conversation that Gio and Frankie were having about the politics. No. So is it, you go back to that. I just, are those know. aspects media driven? Like, so Frankie's saying like, Hey, you know, the, the left is this and that, and the right is this and that, but are those really media driven? Because I get what Gio's Gio's point. Is. I mean, the democratic side, they, they just look at financials differently. They think that month that they think the government can spend money better than the people can. They think that it's the government's money. It's not the right. But hold on, but the, the difference. And and then Republicans think it's the people's the, money and not the government's from the financial okay. side. But the, I mean, but the Republicans they also have social issues that they saying. want to tackle. They just want to tackle them differently. Right. So so I'll tell you what, and and this is not going to be a popular statement. I think Trump spent way too much fucking money, way too much fucking money. That was anti-Republican, the amount of money that Trump spent. As an independent, you don't have an opinion on what's Republican or not. No. I'm, just no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you know what? I say that and I joke. I say that and I joke. But you have to agree. You're, you're a Republican. You might not be registered that way. You are a Republican. <laughs> I, was, I was actually a Republican until two um, years ago. I actually switched to independent because I... Because he didn't want to get audited. No. <laughs> <laughs> actually, right now, that makes a fucking really good point and i did that two years ago so i'm safe but i i did that on purpose because i saw the division in this country and i actually refused to be put in a box i wanted to make my argument the way i wanted to make my argument without having labels i didn't want a team i didn't want a team because from a social aspect quite honestly i really don't fucking you know we talked about her you might talk 
I voted for him because I liked him. I thought he was charismatic, and I I think a lot of people fucking turd. And I, I think a lot of people like, voted for Obama the first time. And I like Joe the, Biden a thousand times Trump. more, a thousand times more the than Hillary I like Clinton. Palin. Palin. <laughs> I, I'm talking. I'm talking about the Obama Biden ticket as opposed to the McCain Palin. Sure, sure, sure. I yeah. just like them. I just like them both. I Palin was rough. At, I looked at McCain the same way I look at Mitt Romney now, where I don't. I think Mitt votes i think mitt is trying to become john mccain just not as charismatic he's just not as charismatic i mean we all saw that when he ran against obama the second time nate you have any final words for us just a little more Um, no great (laughs) (laughs) there's another tiktok (laughs) i'm pretty well out of words i mean i i think i pretty well said my piece on 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 this i appreciate you guys having me on um you know, I, I always enjoy the banter. I enjoy the conversation. You know, I think uh, I think it was Frankie that said, you know, maybe it was Roll. I don't know. You know, these are these are complex issues. They're not they're not black and white. Um, you know, I think the shame of it is I, I wish that more people could do what we did here tonight and have a robust dialogue around it and on certain places just agree to disagree, right? Like yeah. if you want to do that, I, I think part of the problem you know, with all of these issues and you talked, you know, Rolo, you asked the question of like, well, was it politicized or was it, an, it was it this, was it that every issue, actually it was you that said, um, you know, people are kind of picking a side, right? And and that's on every issue. This is, it's not mm-hmm. exclusive to this issue, issue, whether it's social justice and race, you can't, you can't be like in the middle. You can't be like, well, I'm, I'm really pro police but I I do believe that maybe some reforms need to happen, right? It's like, well, if you're pro-police, you're white supremacist and you think, you know, like, and and, and we've taken, and this is really the shame in society, I think right now, as it pertains to all things political, I'll just leave it with this, is that it's gotten to a point where not only can we not, uh, not disagree on something, if we disagree, it actually makes you a bad person. Right. Like, well, if you think that or you don't support this enough or you're not behind this enough or you don't you don't advocate for for biological men to play girl sports or you you don't advocate for defunding the police, you know, these extremes that have kind of been created. It's not just, a, OK, well, you have a different perspective than me and you have a different opinion than me. It's actually gotten to a point where it's you're a bad person. You're a racist. You're a white supremacist. You're a sexist. You're a Mossad. Pick your pick your adjective. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, my hope is that as, as time goes on, we, we get out of kind of this cancel culture that's been created, this safe space culture, this, you know, not being able to say, well, I think this and Frankie goes, all right, you think that, well, that's cool. I disagree. Everything's like, I feel it now, right? Like if you, if you have an argument with a millennial, they don't even say, I think, or I believe they say, well, I feel that, that girls shouldn't be allowed to pull, you know, boys shouldn't be allowed to play girl sports or boys. Should, because then if you, if you, if you object, it's well, you, if feelings are unassailable, right? You can't, you can't, you can't criticize me for the way I feel. It's just the way I feel. Um, which, which creates a situation where you never have to actually take a stance or formulate an opinion or defend an ideology. You can just, everything is subjective and arbitrary and, and, and there's no such thing as true and false. So, you know, I, I appreciate any conversations like this where, you know, we could we could throw out these these intricate, complex, um, you know, at, at times heated and personal and emotional topics um, and come to a place of, of understanding on it. So thanks for having me on again. I enjoy it. We appreciate having you on. Longest answer ever for no, by the way. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Gio, how about yourself? Uh, first thing, let's just get this out of the way. Um, big congratulations to all the Chelsea fans out there. Congratulations on your Champions, Champions League win. Also, big shout out to Christian Pulisic, Hershey PA, sweetest place on earth, for being the first American to play in the European final and the first American to be a champion of the European finals and play in the European finals. So congratulations to that. First um, male. First male first, American. First male Sorry. Ah, yeah. First mail. Um, so on, on the note for what we were talking about, um, you know, look, I have no, uh, you know, I, you can identify however you want to identify. 
I'm never going to, I, I don't, I don't think it's ever going to change the fact that you are a male or a female. It doesn't mean I don't like you. It doesn't mean I don't appreciate you or anything like that. I just disagree. Right. Just like I'll never be six foot five. Okay. I'll always be taller than Nate, but I'll never be six foot. You five. are not taller than me. Um, and you go, you know, we're all allowed to have our different opinions. We're all allowed to dress, feel differently, do whatever we want, like whoever we want. And that's great because it doesn't make us any different of a people, right? Mike's probably the best athlete in this group. You know, Frank's the best at selling houses. I like to pee on people and Nate likes to get pissed on. It's a normal thing. I didn't enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> you you, you did the- fuck just happened okay first of all let's not all pretend like i'm the only one who's had a guy pee on me in this group okay let's not <laughs> get serious with me <laughs> second of all if, if you haven't don't knock it till you try it are you talking <laughs> about one of these guys over here because you, you literally I, just said, i'm not included in that literally just said whatever makes you happy you'll support it you'll go along with it you, you did say that you <laughs> did say that so, i'll support you know, it i just say that i didn't nate, if nate wants to identify as our kelly it. Then you call me R. Kelly. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm R. Kelly. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Holy fuck. Okay. Go ahead, Frank. There's a story behind it. Come on. It's not It's not like one day Evan and I got drunk and I was like, hey, dude, pee on my face. All right, you, like remember, right. you remember it differently than I do, but whatever. That was, that was eerily detailed. Frankie, <laughs> closing words. Uh, so I'm I'm disturbed about a lot of what happened. I got um, stung by a jellyfish. I got stung by a jellyfish in Italy. And I was in excruciating pain. And we all saw the Friends episode where you're supposed to pee on <laughs> I it. I did. I did. And, 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 and I said. It was, Mon- it was Monica, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, that, you know that does nothing. And right? if you've never been stung. Uh, no, if you've ask never, him. If you've never ask been him. stung by a jellyfish, it is excruciating. And I don't think, because I've read now since, that peeing on it actually is not good for it. It doesn't do but anything. I, but I don't know. But 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 at the same time. The euphoria have, took over. And that warm, are you saying that, that mentally something that wasn't? Body? Are you saying <laughs> that mentally something that didn't affect you affected you? Well, it changed happened. your mental state. I'm, I'm yeah, curious. but that doesn't make it real. He, he, it's on video. It was, it was really real. real. To you. <laughs> His exact words were, "Oh my God, it's instant relief." <laughs> well, me peeing no, right now would great. be instant relief. No, that's a really great point by Frankie. Like, it did nothing. But to you, you thought and felt like it was doing something. Yes, but the entire medical community is not going to now change their their prognosis and their and their prescription for jellyfish things and say, well, if you think it helps you, even though it's actually horrible because of the bacteria and urine, it's like one of the worst things to do on a jellyfish thing. That's fine. We'll just go along with it then and say that that's now the treatment for jellyfish things. Uh, Rip Torn in Dodgeball uh, said it's sterile. Yeah. <laughs> he did. And he likes the, and and it he tastes likes good. the taste. Yeah. He I, did. I, 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 w- I wish you were sterile, Evan. That is... All right, Frankie, what do you got for us? So the one thing I want to say is, unfortunately, in in this era, I, I let Nate until you and I had this conversation uh, because we agreed on a lot and we disagreed on some. I only have one personal friend of mine that I can actually have a conversation like that. Literally lay that out. This is what I think. This is why I think it, and this is what you think, and this is why you think it. We can have that conversation, toss in our own imp- opinions plus facts, and and be perfectly fucking fine when we're done with it. And and what I want to say is is you and I don't agree on all of it, and and that's fine. But I respect the fact that you let me talk, I let you talk. We had that conversation, and and it worked out well and we're fine. And I think this country needs a whole lot more of that type of conversation where there was points that we literally are not going to disagree on, or I'm sorry, not agree on. And that's fine. Um, But we need to have those conversations and we need to move forward on those conversations. Um, So I, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having that dialogue and we need to do it more often with more people. Was that the Rocky? Was that the Rocky Four speech? 
if I can change and you can change, I'm saying maybe and everybody can change. We can all change. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> all right, Mike, what's your last word here? Uh, well, one, I'd like to make a correction to the record. Uh, I witnessed Gio on several championship soccer teams where he got plenty of playing time and was even a starter. So the man can play some soccer. I don't know how much he just Venmoed you to say that, but no, I, you, you, you sold your soul. The glasses came on and I was just sold on my your phone. Soul. Yeah. Nope. He was solid defense, wing defender. Very, very solid. Uh, two, I didn't realize. Well, I can't really lie about it. I did realize, but it, it, thanks for reminding me that I'm running a podcast with two Republicans. So that's happening. And three, before DeSantis 2024, he needs to work on DeSantis 2022. So I think you might want to update your name there. Oh, he's, he's, his approval ratings are off the charts down here. This has been another episode of Cheers to Controversy. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time. <laughs> Salute. Thank you.